Planet Water Podcast. Hello everybody, here is Martin, your personal water sommelier, and today we thought we're doing a special episode of A Water With. Obviously, hopefully, you saw me already on Netflix on the new documentary show with Zac Efron. Um, Down to Earth on Netflix is in the top 10 of Netflix right now. So when you haven't seen it, check it out on Netflix. It's streaming right now. And on episode two in season one, there is the first seven minutes at water tasting. And it happens in West Hollywood. And guess what? Well, I was invited to hydrate Zac Efron. And this was really a lot of fun. We had incredible fun. And we thought today, uh, my co-host Michael Mascher and myself, we wanted to revisit all the different waters we actually tasted on the Netflix show. Hello, Michael to Texas. How are you? Hello. How are you, Martin? Congratulations. And I'm, I'm very honored that because usually we have a guest and we're drinking water with someone else. So I'm very honored that you're drinking water with just with me today. So <laughs> and. I, I, of course, saw the Netflix episode, and I think it was really great. And you will talk about it later. I got a lot of feedback. You know, I didn't know where all this traffic is coming from, to the website, to Instagram, and so forth. But my first question is, you know, how were those people? They're they famous celebrities. You know, were they nice, or did they behave like we think celebrities behave? Good question. No, I have to say they are the nicest people ever. And, and especially Zach was almost like surprised and he was like, because let's face it, when a producer is telling you, oh, you're going to Petia Mitaj Hotel in West Hollywood, you're meeting a water sommelier over there and you're going to do a water tasting. When you never heard about that concept, you're like, what? What do I have to do? That's kind of crazy. Um, and I think it's totally normal when people would say like a water sommelier, come on, this, this cannot be real. This is just something crazy. This is made up. This is Hollywood. But when he came and we talked a little bit and chit chatted before, and I was asking him, so Zach, what kind of water are you drinking? And we talked a little bit about the whole industry. He was like more and more intrigued. And he could really feel like that. He's like, whoa, I didn't know that there's so much to learn. And this is pretty much, and Anne the same. And Kendrick, the famous actress who was obviously with us, said as well, like, I cannot believe that. What's happening right now? You're changing my life. He's saying, I never thought about this idea of drinking water and all these different bottles of waters are tasting differently and they're actually coming from a different source. And, oh my God, purified water is actually nothing else than filtered tap water. A lot of people could not believe that. So they are the nicest people ever. And I'm really honored as well to be on that show. I received, Michael, obviously tons of responses as well. Again, I don't know how many different followers suddenly on Instagram. Uh, people are reaching out to me. They're reaching out to the hotel. Um, it's really fascinating and it's so much positive energy right now on the internet about this sequence, what I really appreciate. And that is, I think, what we all want to do. We want to showcase the most healthiest beverage on this planet, but it has actually taste and it's not boring. And I love, Michael, you sometimes saying like, is water boring? Can you explain this a little bit to me? Yeah, I think sometimes people say, what is boring? And I think what people actually mean is not that a particular water is boring, but it's boring that you don't have a choice. And I think the very second you put a portfolio in front of people with multiple waters like you did, from low to high minerality, you know, small bubbles, big bubbles, a world opens up. And what I think I took away from the show was, and you have, and I will have done this many times, you give people a water tasting, and you look into their eyes and you know this very moment you have changed their world. They will always remember the moment when they first discovered that water is not just water. You, you changed their world and we're doing this for 10 years and I'm still getting a lot of satisfaction out of it. And so I'm sure it must have been great for you to see that you can do this also with celebrities who have access to many different things. We probably don't have access, but they still haven't paid attention to the little detail of how different waters actually can be. Yeah, and how important water is. And I think that is always the interesting part, and I totally agree with you, Michael, um, because we're all drinking water. Like, we're all engaging with water on a daily basis, but we never really think about it, because we just think, ah, oh, it's water, it's H2O. We never thought, what? Well, wait a minute, is there actually something in water, like besides H2O? And then we talked in the show about TDS, and Netflix showed it so nicely about total dissolved solids. 
yes, there's more in water than just H2O. And there's obviously here the selection what I had on the show. Um, several of them, you will remember these selections. Some waters you won't maybe remember because you just saw them in the picture. We actually taped that sequence uh, for quite a while. It was like four or five hours it took us to tape it. Obviously, we went through way more waters than the water's been actually shown on the show. But this is normal when you're taping four hours, but then the sequence is actually seven minutes. What I think it's almost like amazing that it was actually seven minutes long, because that's quite a long time to do a water tasting. But I think, Michael, uh, I want to hydrate myself a little bit as well. And we should talk a little bit about the brands right here, what some of the brands, what obviously been showed, and some of the brands who haven't been shown now on the, on the station. And Michael is very familiar with all the brands. Obviously, I'm familiar with them as well. Second N is obviously familiar with them. Um, but one brand in particular, what I think is fascinating is Svalbardi from Norway, from the Svalbard region. And um, you will see that water sometimes in the picture, but it's not like the sequence where we're actually tasting that water has been missed by Netflix. Michael, what do you think about uh, Svalbard? Can you tell a little story about this water? Yeah, it's, it, it's, it's a great story. And if you want to see the whole story, uh, Martin, I think you were with uh, Jamal, who is the owner and founder of uh, Svalbard. You spent some time with him on the boat virtually in the, around Svalbard, and he explained everything. So this is a water with a very low mineral content. It's water that was rain maybe 4,000 years ago and fell and has been snow and ice ever since. And the water was recently harvested and put in, in a bottle. So it's a very, very special water from a very remote area, which is Svalbardi and at the northernmost point in, in Norway, an, an island group in, in, the, in, the, in the really ice cold sea. And this is where glaciers come down and break off and the ice drifts away. And Jamal has a very special boat and they're collecting the ice and bottling it for some very spe special bottling with a, a very great story. I think so too, Michael. And you mentioned it already, uh, Water With Podcast. Obviously, there are more episodes. It's just not our first episode what Michael and myself are doing. And in the very first episode, we have the virtual visit on the boat where they're harvesting the iceberg. So please check out on YouTube or on your podcast channels the other podcasts what we're doing a Water With. Uh, you will see, for example, Aquilife as well, how we're collecting the water originally in, in Australia. And obviously here we are in a virtual boat with Svalbardi. But I want to showcase as well the bottle because I think Jamal and his team did an incredible job to, to present this. Uh, first of all, it comes in this incredible, beautiful like vessel. And then the bottle, look at that. It's quite <laughs> fascinating for me. What a beautiful bottle that is. And I will put this here into the picture as well. People, um, just to give you the heads up, who are listening to us on your podcast. Um, yes, we're doing this as a video as well on YouTube. So check it out on YouTube as a video. And um, so this is the Svalbardi, uh, the taste of snow in the air. I love the hashtag what they're using. They have the Fine Water Society emblem right here. Uh, this is the emblem what Michael Masher uh, founded. In when did you do this, Michael? Oh, the Fine Water Society in 2008. So we are... Okay. 12 years old already. Yeah. So when people always say like, only in LA there's a water sommelier, and only in LA, this is something brand new. Uh, I did this in 2005, guys. So I started the whole idea of to being a water sommelier in 2005 in Germany. So it was not only in LA. It is actually a German thing. And I think you can hear it from Michael as well. He's not from Germany originally. He's from Austria originally, but he lives in Texas, and he founded the society in Texas. Um, so this is Svalbardi put in iceberg water. Too bad they didn't make it to the show, but you will see it sometimes on, on the pictures, obviously, in the show. It's an incredible low TDS water. And I think you can already see this is not just for hydration, right? This is a special water. This is experience. And Svalbardi and some other brands show you that you can also have experiences with water. You don't all, it doesn't always have to be champagne. I don't drink any alcohol. I go to a party where other people bring expensive Bordeaux or you know, vintage champagne, and I bring a bottle of Svalbardi. At the end of the evening, no one is talking about the Cristal champagne. 
everyone is talking about the small body of water because it's a story, it's an experience. And I think this is what these high-end brands are doing. They're moving a water away just from the pure hydration aspect into experiences. And I think that's really important. I love that you're saying this because a lot of people still getting confused. And I see this now on all the response and attraction what I'm getting on Instagram right now. A lot of people think, but Martin, this is all hydration. You say, no, 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 no. It's not just about hydration. There are two different parts of shoes for me when it comes to hydrating with water or experience with water. Because I'm a sommelier, so obviously I'm working in a restaurant. I'm pairing waters to other beverages and dishes. And it's quite fascinating when you're following here the podcast and we're doing our taste test that the experience in your mouth is quite different. And you saw this on the Netflix show as well. And actually, it has an impact on other beverages. And I think this is the biggest surprise what a lot of people don't know. Um, we just, for example, created a sorbet. So we went to the um, Gelato Festival. This is an incredible, amazing gelato factory store here in West Hollywood. They invited me. I brought five different waters. And we created a lemon sorbet with just different waters. It's exactly the same recipe, but we're just using different waters because 50% is around water in a sorbet. The sorbet not even tasted differently, it even looked differently because based on the different mineral compositions. And that is for me the fascinating part, why to be a water sommelier and why I think all these amazing brands right here on the table and there are hundreds of other amazing, amazing brands out there um, that they have an impact on other beverages and on other food. That is for me quite the fascinating thing. So this was Swabari in a great water. So Jamal, thank you so much for creating that and providing this to the world that we can actually taste the terra of Svalbard here in a bottle in yeah, Los Angeles. Another one what you definitely saw on the, on the show but we haven't tasted is Fiji water. And a lot of people I think saying like, come on Martin, Fiji? I can find it everywhere. Like it's in every gas station. It's so normal. Is it even from Fiji? That's always the second question I'm getting. Is it really from Fiji? So you see here it says natural artesian water on the bottle. That means it actually comes from artesian spring. Michael, your cue, what is an artesian spring? Well, an artesian spring. So let's start. What is a spring? We all know how spring looks like. How does the water run out of the spring? It's by gravity. There's water above the spring. The water through gravity runs and emerges at the spring by gravity. Artesian springs, the water is under pressure. It's called an artesian aquifer. So the water is pressured. And if there is a rupture or a hole, the water will emerge from the, from the artesian well under its own pressure. I just want to mention, I just want to mention quickly, Martin is, Everything is in glass here, and we have a couple of bottles that are also in plastic. And people talk about bottled water. So I want to make sure people understand there are two different, very different things that are called bottled water. One is like the waters we have here is water in a bottle from a natural source. So it, this is what I would call real water. It comes from a real place. It has terroir like wine. It expresses its surroundings. It's a natural product. And the other thing that sometimes sold and in the US very often sold in bottle is purified water. And what purified water means, it's usually tap water. Somewhere in the middle of the city, there's a factory. The tap water runs into the factory. The water is filtered. We call it polished as the minerals added and put in a plastic bottle. And unfortunately, what you see in the supermarket is two products that are very, very different sitting next to each other. And Martin, you had a lot of pictures taken of two different products sitting next to each other and really confusing the consumer. Yes, absolutely right. And I think this is like the takeaway from the show, what I see a lot of people really reach out because they didn't know the difference between purified water, what is for me the fast food of beverages. This is a highly processed beverage product. I'm not even calling it water anymore because for me that has nothing to do with water or then here this a natural occurring real water from a natural occurring source, what mother nature created. And this is for me the same. When I'm going to a restaurant, I'm going to a restaurant because I want to taste the incredible good food. I want all my, the vitamins. I want all the nutrition in good food. 
I want all the minerals actually in good food as well. There are tons of minerals dissolved in food as well. That's the reason I'm going to good restaurants because I know they will source local great products who are like try to be not processed and making a great meal for me. That's the reason I want to eat organic and great grown food. It's the same with water for me. I want water from a real source and I'm really not interested in anything purified, filtered, a huge machine on my desk where like this crazy pH idea and then suddenly they say, yeah, and this machine costs you $5,000 from Japan. I don't even know the name from it. Um, this is the, the best water ever because you can uh, create different pH waters and when you have like a high pH water, you can balance out your body with that. What is obviously nonsense, guys. Please do not believe in that. Because first of all, your body has so many different pH levels. Your stomach fluid is very acidic. Your urine is very acidic. Your body uh, blood pH is, is very base between 7.35 and 7.45. So you see it's 0 0.1 is the ratio right there in your blood. When you're going to change it just slightly, you will not survive on this planet. Trust me. So therefore, this whole idea of, oh my God, I should drink alkaline water because I can balance out my body. Yeah, what are you trying to balance out? There is, this is all like marketing, marketing like claims, marketing like ideas. And for me, uh, Netflix was so nice when I said bullshit, I can say it here on, on our podcast, they beep it right away. Um, no, I think purified water and the whole idea of alkaline water when it comes to oh my God, it's so healthy for you, is completely bullshit. But we actually think, Michael, alkaline water actually has a benefit, a taste benefit, I think. Yes, there are many natural alkaline waters, and they sometimes go very high, up to a pH of 9, 9.2. And they're very beautiful waters because they feel very soft. They feel very heavy. It's a totally different experience than if you drink a water with a pH of 5 or 6 which has a little bit more of the acidity. And again, very important for us is to notice there is no best water. We're not trying to say this is better than this one here. Remember, it's about experiences. And like with wine, you want to have many different experiences from a very acidic white wine to a big, heavy, bold, you know, fruit bomb of a, of a Californian red. Different experiences, different food, different pairings. I want to quickly come back to, to, to Fiji again. Um, you said um, many people don't believe it comes from Fiji. I saw Fiji in the, in the mid 90s for the first time in Los Angeles. And I couldn't believe it, it comes from Fiji because I lived in Fiji for three years on a small remote island. And the biggest problem we had is finding drinking water. So I was very surprised that now suddenly people have uh, bottled water in Fiji. But of course, this Fiji comes from uh, the main island, which is very, very tropical lots of rainforest and really a very beautiful, very remote area. And the only thing, and Martin is talking to them, I'm sure is it's only PET it would be so nice to have it in glass. Yeah, I think so too. But I think they're like having some ideas to obviously doing 100% recycling PET now. I think they're trying to launch like bigger sizes that like gallons that you can actually refill your bottles. What I think would be great as well. I love the idea of refilling some water brands. We Michael know already rising springs, for example, is one American water brand, incredible good water um, comes in a big gallon, like very, very big. And I think 2.5 gallon container is that, or and then you can refill your water and you can put it in your water vessel, what you have. And pretty much the same concept, what we show, what we saw on the show on Netflix, when they went to Paris, and they have the tap water qualities all over Paris, and you can buy actually an empty water vessel in a in a in a little store, and then you're going to the to the like spring source. No, it's not a spring source, but like to the um, tap water fountains. Let's say like that in Paris, and you can choose your sparkling or still water. But I think it's an incredible, great idea. But again, that is for hydration. That is not the experience. The experience is obviously this. Oh my God, I can get some water here for free. What I think is amazing and cool, but this is for me a little bit more interesting because they are different taste profiles. So water is not just water. But you're absolutely right. Uh, Vita Levo, this is the main island, Fiji, where this comes from. I would love to see it obviously in a glass bottle. No, I just can't have it in PET. I think it's still an remarkable, interesting water. 
because the silica content of this water is very, very high. There are not so many waters uh, with that kind of like silica content, what Fiji has. Therefore, this water is a very, very smooth and very round mouthfeel water, what I really appreciate. Another water, what has been featured very heavily on the show, and now we're coming to the waters who you saw on the show, is Aquilife. So Aquilife, I know since around two and a half years now, uh, suddenly two people just showed up at Patina restaurant where I had the water menu in place when I was working at Patina. And said like, hey Martin, we have an interesting water for you. Maybe you want to taste that. And I was like, so where's this coming from? Yeah, from Australia, Southern, Southern Australia, Three Bay area. I think, okay, that's kind of cool. So they told me the story, it's a natural growing source. And, and I loved the idea. And then I tasted the water and I was blown away. I was blown away for two reasons. One, for the taste profile, for, for this very, yeah, very, there's a lot of going on in your palate when you're drinking Aquilife. It's a high mineral content water. The TDS is 1,300. For a still water, extremely high. When we're thinking about Svalbard, Svalbardi, for example, has a TDS of 17. Fiji has a TDS of 222. When you think about smart water, uh, TDS of around 20, and Essentia, what a lot of people always think, like, oh my God, Essentia overhydrating, all this crazy uh, scam marketing claims again. This has to be amazing because there's so much electrolytes added. Yeah, 70 is the TDS of Essentia, so please don't believe it, huh? what they're actually adding. This has way more electrolytes than Essentia and smart water together. Anyhow, 1,300 TDS, fascinating stuff for me. The most unique thing about Aquilife is, is the mouthfeel and texture of that water. And Netflix showed it very nicely because they said, or I said, it's the olive oil of waters. And Michael and myself had it several times now, even blind tastings, and we could right away tell you, oh my God, that is Aquilife. And we were always right. What do you think, Michael? Um, absolutely, it's a standout water. There are a couple around the world that have similar still waters with a very high uh, mineral content. So Cosani from Peru, we had this um, two years ago when we were in Ecuador, would also come to mind in, in that kind of group, but it's, it, it's very unique. So I hope at this point we're not boring our audience because we're talking about waters, how good they taste and all those kind of things. And people, over you mentioned you have a lot of people calling you. I have a, a ton of emails and the email usually says, where can I get this water? It's all this is written in the email. And I have to write people back, which water do you want? And where are you? Because it makes a big difference where in the world you are when you say, I want those waters. So unfortunately, those waters are very hard to get in your local stores. You have to really hunt around. And most of the stuff you will not be able to get. So we have done two things, Martin and I. And Martin can talk later a little bit about our Fine Water Academy and the De Sommelier course. But I also want to mention, we have a, a course for people that are just interested in elevating their knowledge about water. It's like a Wine 101 course. You go to a restaurant and suddenly you know a lot of things about water and can match water with food, understand the differences. So we have that course in the Fine Water Academy. It's very quickly, it's one, two days. It's very fun videos with the two of us. And this will give you a lot of knowledge about water. I guarantee you, you go to a restaurant and there's a snobby wine sommelier there and he, he treats you like, you know, you don't know anything. Just ask him a couple of questions about water after you've taken our course and you will see how he suddenly is out of his water, so to speak, because he has no clue what you're talking about. So very little effort and you know will know a lot about water. So that's the first aspect. The second aspect is that with some portfolio distributors, those are the good people that sell you the waters we have here and many more. We have created special boxes of samples of waters from low to high, from small bubbles to big bubbles. And we will put some links below. So what you can do now, you go to the academy, you get the course, you learn a lot about water and you can order sample cases and get them delivered to you. And you have the experience. We tell you right now about how special this water is, but I think it only really works if you have the water in front of you and you can actually drink it. 
Yeah, and I would love obviously to see, so whoever signs up, first of all, yes, there are videos with Michael and myself. So we are your water sommeliers and we have, it almost feels like it's a private session just for you, Altered. And the second thing is, I would love to see obviously videos and pictures of you because we're gonna rebroadcast them then on our social media channels when you are having the experience was Zach Efron and Anne had. So that is very important for us as well, that you're like feeling celebrities because you are celebrities. We're all human beings. We're all here on the same, on the same planet. And I think it's important that we are all treating ourselves to the beauty of this amazing waters, what we have right next to us. So that was Aquilife, what you saw in the show, where we all thought, oh my God, that is like olive oil. It really has the texture of olive oil. Think about like, because a lot of people might be saying like, Come on, Martin, really like texture and water? Like what are you talking about? You need to experience this by yourself. Trust me, everybody will get it right away when you have that in your mouth. And just think about like the milk qualities. We all know about non-fat milk, low-fat milk and whole milk. This is like whole milk. This is like really like heavy on your palate versus like non-fat milk is almost like water. And I'm saying this is a water sommelier now. I should not. Uh, another one, what was been broadcast, and now we're going from the still versions, what we have here, to the more sparkling versions. And another one, what I think is an incredible good water, is Hilden from Great Britain. Um, I will put this a little bit in the camera. Let's see if you can see it. Yeah, you can see it right there, because this is quite fascinating. And I will read it for you, what it says on Hilden. Hilden is from England, first of all, so from Great Britain. It says gently sparkling, what's absolutely right, it's an effervescent sparkling water. You would almost think like somebody tried to get rid of the carbonation when you drink and opening this bottle. It has very, very tiny bubbles. I'm always saying it like almost like champagne bubbles. What's for me is always interesting, it's, it says, by appointment to Her Majesty the Queen, supplier of natural mineral water, build not Hampshire. So this is, the official water of the Buckingham Palace. This is what the queen is drinking on a daily basis. And you have to be careful. And I'm saying this all the time because I'm using Hilden uh, in quite a lot of tastings so far. Be careful, when you drink too much Hilden, your arm will do something like this or like that, like the queen. Huh? So be careful there a little bit. But you can feel royal when you're drinking Hilden water. Uh, TDS of 312. Michael, what do you think about Hilden? I, th I think the most outstanding feature is, and this is a water that has been around for a long time. It's not something recently, right? This goes back at least 10 years or so. So this was fairly new to have a water gently carbonated. And it really depends where in the world you are, what you think about carbonated water. You know, if you're in Germany, Austria, of course, if, if you say, I want a mineral water, you get a carbonated water. That's that's the, the standard thing. and in the US, for example, most people don't like carbonated water because they think carbonated water is like Perrier, this big firework in your mouth, kind of big bubbles that distract everything. Again, no good or bad, but it's very far on the, on the right side of the spectrum, so to speak. So it was really nice to see the gentle soft bubbles, which are much more food friendly and also open up the carbonation for people that say, I don't like carbonated water but I wanted to have something new. So this is almost like it's something in between. And I wanna mention that Hilton is artificially carbonated. So the so still water and carbonation is injected shortly before the bottle is uh, filled and then the bottle is sealed. The, the next waters uh, we will be drinking in Martin will be showing are naturally carbonated. It's a very rare thing when the water emerges, you, usually to some volcanic activity below the aquifer, the water already emerges with the bubbles. I would say, you know, maybe one or two percent of the waters in the world that are bottled are naturally carbonated, very rare, and makes the water very, very interesting. So the next two waters you have there, Martin, are two very classic naturally carbonated waters. Yeah, the next one was Vichy Catalan, what we tasted. And Vichy Catalan is for me an outstanding water from Spain. And a lot of people always say like, come on, Martin, all your fancy waters, huh? like, I can't even get them. They're like so small production waters, maybe Fiji is not, but the rest we never heard of. So there has to be like very, very small and we never heard about it. So therefore, like, this is almost like crazy that you're even talking about these little brands because we cannot get them. Vichy is like the arrowhead of Spain. So that water 
everybody knows in Spain. This is the number one consumed sparkling water in Spain. It has tons of minerals dissolved. 3,054 is the TDS level of this. It has over 1,000 milligrams of sodium. It is a little bit on the saltier side, I have to say. What I like, I think it's fascinating. It has a lot of character, what Michael and I would say. And what I love about this here as well, this like almost like, yeah, like stone fracture. When you, when you look at this like here closer right now, you see it here on the bottle. They really want to showcase the strong taste of that water, even on the bottle. And I think, Michael, um, we should talk because we all know about the terra of the waters. But I think it's quite fascinating when you see all these different brands here that even the design has terra. I think that is for me fascinating. I think it's really fascinating. If you look at wine bottles, wine, of course, has terra. We all know what it means. It means a a particular grape expresses its surrounding and the area where it grows. But if you look at the, the wine bottles, they are very standard. There's a Bordeaux bottle, there is a, a white wine bottle, and maybe there's a burgundy bottle. That's it. And you have the champagne bottle. So you have three, four bottle styles. And the only thing that differentiates the wines is the label and the name. So I think wine bottles are kind of boring. The interesting thing is with the bottled water, the bottles for bottled water is that they have much more freedom and they try to express terroir. They go into the history. They look how bottles have looked like 500 years ago in this area. They, they try to express and integrate the story, not only into their website, their social media, but also into the packaging, how it looks like. And I find that, you know, really fascinating and very interesting. It makes water bottles very tactile. And we both see that if we give water tastings, that people afterwards come to the stage and they want to touch the bottles. I can guarantee you Martin showed me the Svalbardi bottle. If you put that bottle on the table, everyone who sees that bottle will come there and touch it. And it's really very special. It's, you're almost not quite touching the source, but it's the closest thing to touching the sources, making this emotional connection between the bottle and, and the source. And I think we're very lucky to have this with water because I don't think we have it in wine. You're absolutely right. This is the only product on this planet where you can touch almost like the source as well. You're feeling connected. I love what you just said. This reaction, what you have, and this I can touch the bottle, I can feel the water almost, I can drink it then to me. And this is what you would th should think about it. Because again, this is not purified tap. That is not boring. This is here. You can travel around the world and taste the beauty of Mother Nature. You can, you can feel it. You can touch it. All senses are respected to that. And that is, for me, fascinating, especially right now in the times where we're living in with COVID-19, where traveling is even more harder on us and nobody wants to travel. I don't want to travel. I was supposed to traveling to Europe. I was supposed to traveling to the East Coast. I was supposed to traveling to China this year. I canceled everything, but what I said, like, do you know what? We just need to like scale back a little bit of this traveling. A lot of obviously events were were, uh, were canceled, but I still can travel at home by drinking all this incredible, amazing waters. And I can always put my body and myself, when I'm closing my eyes to the spring, I can read a little bit about the water I can taste the terra and I can feel that I'm actually in that country where the water is coming from. And that is for me just mind blowing as a water sommelier. It's for me like that is what I want. I want to be connected to nature. That is exactly what we want as sommeliers. We want to connect ourselves to Mother Nature and to help Mother Nature to showcase this beauty here in our palate. Vishy, one more. One more thing, what, what a famous uh, company would say right now. <laughs> One more thing. Um, this was on the show as well. And I know um, it's very, very hard to get. This is a water, what everybody tries to get all the time. It's Roy from Slovenia. I'm lucky me and lucky Michael. I think we're the two only human beings in the Northern Hemisphere who actually have access to Roy water. 
uh, especially here in America, I don't know that anybody else has that on their portfolio or even has access to it to buy it. This is something very special. Uh, lucky me, I have a great relationship to the owners. That is a great thing in general about all these brands. They're actually people behind that. It's not just a big corporation where they, Michael always, what you're always saying, Michael, what does they have in mind? The only thing big corporations have in mind? So I think there are two sizes of uh, bottled water companies. And one is the small companies where people have passion. They do it. Of course, they have to make money. So we're, they're not giving it away. But it's really passion. It drives them to have a product out there. Think of a farmer. A farmer doesn't become a small farmer and grow vegetable or raises your livestock in order to make a lot of money. It's his passion. So the, the small brands have the same passion. What Martin and I, unfortunately, sometimes seeing is if the companies become very big, we're not going to name any names. But if you talk to those people, it's about spreadsheets. Their main interest is the spreadsheet and things like profit margins, you know, how, how fast can they grow? All the things you can derive from a spreadsheet. And both Martin and I are very passionate people, as you can see. So we have a hard time talking with the people when everything really is just about the spreadsheet and not about the water. Correct. And uh, Roy, obviously, is an incredible good water from Slovenia with an extremely high TDS of 7,400. Uh, the magnesium content is extremely high in this water, what is for me always fascinating. And we showed on the show that we all said and that we all agreed on it. Oh my God, it's, it's almost metallic in taste. Yes, that is what it is. Yes, it's sometimes, this one is now a clear one again. Sometimes it happens. And again, this is a product of nature. This is not a product of a factory. So sometimes, Baroy, you will see small little particles suddenly floating about. This is like the high content magnesium content, what you sometimes see. You will see it a little bit, I think. When I'm putting the bottle right now next to it, you maybe see very, very small particles. This is nothing bad. This is actually minerals, what you want to have in your water. And Roy, for me, is fascinating. And I saw Michael just put his incredible good water glass up front as well, because you see me um, using this water glass. This comes from the same region, Michael, huh? Then Roy. Yes, sir. Yes, absolutely. I totally forgot about it. So if, if you see the bottle from Roy, it says 1611 on the bottle. So this was a, a source and a spa that was developed, you know, in started in 1611 when this was probably your best way of getting healthy is drinking this water because going to the doctor probably did more harm than, than anything else you could do at, at 1611. And people wanted to take the, the water home. From, from the spa. So there was a glass company formed at this time next to the, to the sewers and they made small bottles so people could buy a bottle, take the water home and bring it to someone that was sick and couldn't go there. So this idea of glass and water really is showcased in, with, with Roy and Rogashka being the, the, the place name. And I was very fortunate enough a couple of years ago to design a, a water glass because I got really sick of, if you order water in a restaurant, the wine people get this nice, you know, Riedel Sommelier glasses, really nice stems. And as a water drinker, you get a, a tumbler, no stem, and it looks like a children's glass. So I really got sick of this idea. And I said, we need to have a, a better stemware. So we designed this glass and it has been selling very well. And it's really, again, comes back to one thing, this experience. Drinking water from this glass is an experience. Drinking it from the bottle is not. So glassware is important. What this also shows us the glass is that there's such a thing as a bottled water etiquette. And if you take the, the 101 course, you will learn everything about the etiquette. So Martin will tell you that when he tastes these waters, and I do the same thing, we taste it at room temperature. We don't want to take it out of the fridge and have it in ice cold because everything we've explained to you into details is gone if you drink water at when it's too cold. So room or cellar temperature would be the, the best aspect for, for drinking water. And glassware is also really important. You know, you want to celebrate. You have that Svalbardi water and it's not cheap, right? 
Martin sells it, I believe, for $150 in, in the restaurant. It's probably half of that if you buy it in, in, in retail. So you want to celebrate it. So there's such a thing as a bottle of water etiquette, and it frames the whole idea of elevating water from a hydration commodity product to a very special natural product with terroir that comes from a particular place and expresses that place with an emotional connection. Yeah, I think everybody who, who saw the show on Netflix saw it as well. We used wine glasses. And you will see me barely drinking water from a tumbler or something like this. And exactly what Michael just said. We want to elevate water. Water is way more than just water. This is our hashtag. Water is not just water. Therefore, a wine glass is designed, and Michael's water glass is designed as well, to elevate the experience, to bring water right there where it belongs, in the top of the field in your view. And obviously, these kind of glasses are designed as well to capture all aromas right here that you can when you smell a water. And yes, some waters have an odor. Don't be surprised when I'm doing this. I'm not want to be pretentious. Some waters actually smell. Huh? Like Roy, for example, has clearly an odor to it as well. Um, so a wine glass is designed to capture the aromas of the product what's inside. It's almost like dribbling around all the aromas and you can put your nose and you can really like get all the aromas out. And then a wine glass, like this water glass as well, is designed that you can easily drink it. So it's quite fascinating to really dive deep into the whole water industry uh, on purpose. And I think it's fascinating to always showcase this incredible product again of nature. So we have told you now many, many times, water is not just water. But then people are so, <laughs> what is a fine water? Because when we say water is not just water, we're talking about fine waters. So what is a fine water? And for us, a fine water is a natural product that has terroir, that holds experiences, and that can give wellness. So this is kind of the minimal definition of what, when Martin and I talk about water, this is what we're talking about, and not about the other things that are just, you know, processed product that come from a factory. And for me, it's interesting, Michael, because you're a well worth traveler as well. Like in Europe, I haven't seen any purified water brands. It's quite interesting. So somehow, I don't know why this is a thing in America, especially in the United States, I think, to drink highly processed purified water. Michael, is this something, has this something to do with the word pure, with purification that Americans somehow have in mind? Everything needs to be sterile and clean? Or what is it? It's, it's probably many, many different things, and I don't have a final answer. But if I would try to dig deep, I would start not with water, but with the relationship with food people have in Europe versus in, 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 the, in the US. I think it, it, it's very different. If you look at food, it's something that's enjoyed in, in, in Europe. It's something where children eat many different things. They get exposed to different things. You have a variety. So you're really engaging with your food. There's a culture around food in, in, in Europe. And I think that's where people engage with water. You know, if you travel in Europe, people express what kind of water they want. I want to have this water and I don't like the other one. So I think that's a starting point. And I think what we have here in the US is we sometimes are made afraid of food. You know, they advise what kind of food you have to eat in Europe. Mom knows best what food you should be eating. In the US, you Google something and you ask, should I be eating this? Should it be low carb, high carb, all those kind of different things. And then if deceptive advertising comes in and tells you, as you said, the word pure, suddenly you think, oh, water needs to be pure. I take my mineral pills from the pharmacy and I swallow it down with a pure water. In Europe, people say the minerals are already in the water. So just have a, a sip and you have your minerals and a good natural water. Yeah, this is absolutely right. And I'm always saying this, Michael, as well. It's for me fascinating when I see people going to the pharmacy, buying themselves magnesium and calcium and sodium, like diet pills. And I'm always like, what are you doing with that? Yeah, my doctor said I don't have enough calcium intake. So what kind of water are you drinking? Yeah, yeah, it's, it has to be pure, obviously. You say, no, <laughs> don't drink pure water. <laughs> it's so funny for me. This, this relationship to water has to be pure. And I get it. 
Yes, I want that my water looks clean. I get that. Huh? I don't want to have it brown or yellow or pink or striped on it. I get it. I want my water as far looks like this, what I have in my glass right now. But that does not mean it needs to be TDS of zero. Um, natural occurring water is the way to go. And a lot of people are asking me, so Martin, what is the next big thing in the water industry? So what is the next big thing? And I'm telling them, it's back to the roots. That is the next big thing. And we saw it on food in the States, and we saw it already clearly on beer in the States. I came in 1999 for the first time to America. I lived here in, in Hollywood. I had nothing to do with water. I worked in a restaurant, a patina restaurant on Marrows Avenue for Joachim Splichal, one of my biggest mentors. Um, and I went to the grocery store because I'm German, so I like to have my beers. And for me as a German person, I was like, what the hell is this? That doesn't taste like beer. It even doesn't look like beer. It looks, I don't even know what that was. This whole light beers. Like, I thought it was disgusting. There was no flavors to it. 20 years further now, down the road, you have incredible, like really incredible, artistic, artesian, small crafted beer brands all over America. So people realized why I need to drink this highly like manufactured billions of gallons produced beer, what actually doesn't taste. Why not doing this locally sourced from great products, from great people who actually have a lot of passion to that, what they're doing. The same with food, fast food, fast food, fast food, Soda everywhere, you saw sodas drinking, everybody was drinking sodas. Since two years now, this one right here is the number one consumed beverage in America. It's bottled water, it's not sodas anymore. So people changing, huh? and people realizing suddenly like a Whole Foods, Gelson's, all this like Erewhon, all this like high-end grocery stores for 20 years, almost impossible to find. You had your regular grocery stores and that's it. Now you have this grocery stores where they where they have organic food and incredible good products. So this whole thing shifted in America as well in the last 20 years. And in my belief, this is what's happening with bottled water. Yes, everybody is now at least on the bandwagon that bottled water is healthy and great for you and you should drink a lot of water. And I don't even say bottled water, you should drink in general bottled water because, or I mean in general, good water. I'm not a bottled water sommelier, I'm a water sommelier. So drink your tap. I don't have any issues with that. Drink your tap. Um, but don't buy your tap in a plastic bottle. That just doesn't make sense to me. huh? Like purified water is nothing else than actually boiled up or filtered tap water. That's all what it is. You can cut that. Don't waste your money on it. And now I think the next step will be, and people will realize, and we see it more and more happening, and we saw it again on Netflix now, this is the next big thing. Real water from nature where this company actually taking care of nature as well because they're protecting their areas where the source is. Trust me, that's all natural reservoirs most of the times. They're really trying to make sure that where, where the water is coming from, the source is very well protected. So our body is carbon neutral, even carbon negative, what they're trying to do in the next two years. So there's a lot of great happenings for actually mother nature. And when people say, yeah, but the shipping of our water and then the packaging of water, this is crazy. Just to give the heads up, this one right there has the least impact on all bottled beverages on this planet. A Coke in a can or a glass of wine has a way bigger impact on Mother Nature than these boys right next to me. Um, because bottled water has the smallest impact on all bottled beverages. It's called the indirect water use. Google it. It's quite fascinating. Michael, I think we are like to the end of our little exposure. Um, is there something you want to mention, Michael, to the end? I just want to follow up what you said before about, I also see a big change, you know. I'm doing this since 2002 and no one did a podcast with me. No media outlet wanted to do something because it was just a crazy idea that water could be something other than than, than just water. I see a huge change. I really appreciate the environmentalists raising the issue about the plastic and the PET. I think it's a really good issue, but I think people still sometimes confuse the two bottles we were talking about, the natural water and the processed water. 
And in the US, unfortunately, I think up to 50%, maybe even more, of bottled water sold is actually the processed water. That means we could reduce the plastic waste from bottled water by 50% by drinking tap water. If you don't like your taste of tap water, buy a filter, filter it at home. You have a similar product that you just bought in the supermarket and you have reduced the plastic waste by, by 50%. The other waters, unfortunately, Every time we make a choice what we are consuming, and it's if you drink a beer, a wine, or a water, you make a choice and it has an impact. Martin was saying water has the least impact, but it has an impact. So it will never go completely away. But we can cut 50% of the waste if we stop drinking the purified tap water in a plastic bottle and carry it home from the supermarket. Yeah. I hope I will see that in the future. And I'm very hopeful, and I see a next generation really looking at that problem not so emotional, but really with a more scientific basis. Yeah, I think so too. So therefore, please follow us, obviously here, uh, Water With, our podcast with Michael and myself. We're doing this pretty much every week. We always have incredible, interesting water partners with us in the podcast to showcase their spring source from around the world. So you can actually travel with us to the country where the water is coming from without having any impact on Mother Nature. That is a great thing. When you want to know a little bit more or even want to become a water sommelier, I will put this obviously right here as well. It's www.findwateracademy.com. Follow us on Instagram. Follow us on our, all our social media channels. And to the end, I'm always saying, stay thirsty, stay hydrated, and drink real good water from Mother Nature. And hopefully, I will see you next time here on the podcast with Michael and Martin. A water with. Cheers, everybody.